As you can see, I've cleared a little space on my desk. First time in a long time I've had any visible desk space. But uh, today I want to talk to you a bit about soldering, or if you live in America, soldering. Because if you're in the hobby of RC model planes or RC model anything, then sooner or later you're going to have to learn how to solder materials together, solder wires to connectors, solder wires together, solder components onto circuit boards, as will be the case with the FPV backpack. And this is our little backpack board here. As you can see, it's a little copper board. I've already put one component on there, but I'm going to show you in this series of videos how to build your entire FPV backpack uh, using really easy to source components and boards, which I hope will be, will be available very shortly from a New Zealand manufacturer. Or you can simply etch your own using some simple processes that I'll also document. Now, as I say, the key to this whole process is soldering. And if you're going to do some soldering, well, you're going to need some basic tools and equipment. And first of all, of course, you're going to need a soldering iron. Now, this is a HACO, or HACO, depending on what you call it. I don't know how to pronounce it. A HACO uh, FX888 soldering iron. These are pretty spendy. These cost a little bit of money because they're very good. They're probably about the best you can get for this kind of thing. It's a, it comes with this nice little stand here. And the little stand has a little uh, sponge pad here, which you moisten so that when you're soldering iron, gets all dirty, the tip gets all dirty, just wipe it on there. And if you get too much solder on the tip of your iron, it also has this little uh, gold material here, this little gold ball, and you just wipe your iron on that and it gets all the excess solder off the end of it. Brilliant! So one of the key things with soldering is cleanliness. You want to keep everything clean. That includes your soldering iron. As you can tell, it's not on at the moment, or I'd be running around the room screaming. Uh, but as I say, this is about the best you can get. There are, of course, cheaper, cheaper soldering iron options. The little 35 or 25 watt irons you buy from the, the local hardware store, they'll work, but there are some downsides to them. One of the things being that they're not temperature controlled. And one of the key things, of course, is solder. And don't turn into a happy and getting that lead free solder. What you want to look on here is this magic word here. If I can bring it up to the camera, if it will focus. If I put my hand here, maybe it will. There we go. Look, see? Lead. That's what you need lead. You've got to have lead in your solder. And if you don't have lead in your solder, then you're not going to get very good results, that's for sure. Uh, Lead-free solder is designed to appease the environmentalists and the hippies, not the people who actually want to build stuff that works. So get yourself a little reel of flux cord lead solder. That can be 60-40 or, uh, what's the other one, 67, I don't know, 37-63 or something. Anyway, um, just a, a flux cord lead-free, uh, flux cord leaded solder is what you need. And the flux in there does a very important job because when you heat metals up, they oxidize. Basically, you know, in the case of steel, you get rust, but in the case of copper, you get a copper oxide. In the case of even the tinned leads of some components, they'll oxidize. So you need to stop that oxidation and, in fact, cut through the oxidation so that the solder, the lead and tin in the solder, can alloy with the copper on the circuit board and the component leads. So you need to have flux in the solder to do that, but sometimes that's not quite enough. And if you really want to spend a few extra bucks and get something that you really uh, never regret buying, you can get one of these. And this is a, a flux pin. This one I got, it's made in Mexico. It's a flux pin by Kester. Kester's a good brand. So you can have a Kester flux pin. What it means is that if you need a bit of extra flux, you can just dab this on, just like a felt tip pin. As you can see, a felt tip pin. Um, you can just dab it on the board and that will give you some extra flux. Because as I mentioned, one of the problems with the non-temperature controlled irons are that they actually run too hot. And what that'll do is burn the flux out of your solder. It'll burn it out. So when you first start using the solder, you'll notice a bit of smoke comes off it. That is the flux. And if your soldering iron is too hot, then the flux will burn away and you'll have no flux left. And then you won't be able to solder very well. The solder will get all sticky and draw long, dangly bits off it. It looks horrible. But a flux pen will make a difference. And flux pen also stops the copper, oh, sorry, the solder from bridging those tiny little gaps on the circuit board when you don't want it to. And I mentioned the word tiny, because another thing you're going to need is these. Some granny glasses, some reading glasses. Some people like to use a magnifier, but uh, I find it's a bit of a pain. So I just got some of these from the $2 shop. Little, as you can see, they're quite a high power one. These are four times, because I'm old and I need lots of help. But this enables you to look at the stuff you're soldering at. Look at the board and see what's going on, because some of the soldering is quite fine, quite delicate. So you need to be able to see with good accuracy, good precision, what it is you're actually soldering. So that's basically the setup that I'm using here. And what I'm going to do first of all is just show you some really simple soldering basics. But before I do that, here is the 
the temperature control station for my little HACO temperature controlled soldering on. As you can see, it has this little knob here, which you turn to set the temperature. It looks pretty crude, but it actually has a little microcontroller on there. It's quite a sophisticated piece of gear, so I can change the temperature to suit the solder and suit the kind of soldering I'm doing. A really, really good little bit of kit, and if you only buy one really good tool for working with your electronic stuff, then a good soldering iron is what you should get. Of course, to do some soldering, you're going to need some other tools as well. You're going to need some long nose pliers like this. You're going to need some side cutters for cutting wire and component leads. I actually end up with two sets of side cutters because uh, sometimes one set isn't enough. This is uh, slightly different to that, and sometimes the difference is important. But one set do will do most people. And you're going to need these. These are tweezers, and these are specially designed for picking up the tiny little parts that we're going to be putting onto the circuit board when we make our backpack. Because some of these parts are really, really small. And as I said, that's why you need your granny glasses so you can actually see them. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you basically how to tin a piece of wire because this shows you the basics of soldering, how soldering happens and the way to do it. Now I'm going to tin this piece of copper wire we've got here. I've got my soldering iron. I'll just make sure the tip is clean and free from excess solder. And the way we tin a component when we're going to solder it, you don't heat up the solder and carry it over and put it onto the wire because what happens then is that the very hot solder, when it hits the cold wire, basically freezes and it doesn't actually alloy with the surface of the copper wire. So we have to actually be sure that um, we heat the copper wire and then let the solder actually melt onto that heated copper wire, which is what I'm going to try and do now while watching everything out of the corner of my eye on the camera. So here we go. We A little bit of sol heat solder on the iron just so that it makes good thermal contact. And then we see the solder is actually melting. Whoops, do it again. Solder is actually melting onto the wire, not onto the soldering iron. And we can move the iron around a bit and you can just give it a bit of a touch up like that. That produces a tinned piece of copper wire. And that's important because the first stage of our FPV backpack build is going to be making some circularly polarized antenna. We're going to be using wire like this and we're going to have to tin it and solder it. So let's get on with that part of the build video. 